Hi to all my subscribers. I seem to be doing these regular updates on Wuhan, but it, or, or the Wu flu, or COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. It's just such a fast-moving and rather fascinating scenario. And I know that people are in two camps. Some of them think it's a bit of problem-reaction-solution, or maybe a huge distraction. Other people think, well, this could maybe be um, the big crisis, the big pandemic that has been talked about. So I did have a few questions asking me about the death rate. And as you know, the numbers coming out of the countries are very unreliable. A lot of people are asymptomatic, so you wouldn't really know the true spread of this. But I thought the best way to look at death rate was to analyze the Diamond Princess, which should be called the Disaster Princess, the cruise ship, because of the nearly 4,000 uh, passengers on that cruise ship, 705 uh, came down with it and many more met the tester. They did extensive testing so it kind of captured the asymptomatic people, it captured the people who only developed it much later and uh, so out of them there were 705 plus uh, three employees of the Japanese health ministry that came down with it, one cabinet secretary who visited the ship had it, 42 people in the US uh, developed it after returning back to America same with eight people from Australia, four from the UK, four from Hong Kong, and two from Israel. Well, that makes 769. I'm just going to add two to that to make it 771 because there were two more in the UK today. So if you divide the six deaths, unfortunately one was a UK citizen today, if you divide those six deaths by 771, you get a 0.0075%. So it's it's a very, very low death rate on those numbers. However, it has to be said, it takes a long time for people to, to pass away. A lot of people are very, very ill for a long time, so that number could well go up. Also, there's the cases of reinfections. There's been a reinfection they're talking about in Israel, where someone recovered from it on the ship, uh, flew home to Israel, and now has developed it again. So if people can become reinfected, it means the death rate can go up. And also, sometimes the incubation period is so long that we may not know. So currently, the death statistics on the Diamond Princess show a very, very low death rate. So that's a kind of seven-tenths of a percent. But uh, that could definitely change. So in Iran, things go quite crazy. In fact, the former ambassador from Iran to the Vatican has passed away. Two other top officials have it in Iran. And as you know, Iran has exported it to a number of countries. Apparently, the New Zealand case was an Iranian national who was on the plane and developed it on the plane and was quite ill on the plane. So, you know, you wonder what's going to happen to the rest of the passengers because planes are notoriously places where these things get cultivated. I've been watching the news and I want to do an update on all the countries. Very surprised that we haven't had a single case in Turkey because it's highly likely people from Turkey could have traveled to China because they're very close relations, particularly the gold industry. They could have easily traveled to Iran. They could have also easily traveled to Italy. So it seems odd there's no cases in Turkey. And today, in retaliation for this airstrike by Russia that killed some Turkish servicemen, they've reopened the borders and refugees are already heading towards Greece and Romania, etc. So it seems the whole refugee crisis could escalate and what if there's coronavirus within that that could be a surge into um into into europe particularly in those conditions i mean disease is obviously rife in conditions where there's deprivation so that's rather interesting it also interested me from the point of view is this going to indicate the escalation against russia again because it seems to me that could easily be you know i've, I've long talked that there will be another escalation with the aggression against russia and i wonder if this hyping up tensions in Syria is going to be the pretext for uh, a ramping up of things against Russia. Now, I wanted to talk about this because it was reported in the South China Morning Post yesterday, and I see it's now made its way into the Daily Mail. That is, that scientists are saying the new coronavirus may be significantly different from SARS in that it has an HIV-like mutation, which means its ability to bind to human cells could be up to a thousand times as strong as the SARS virus, according to new research by scientists in China and Europe. And I do believe scientists in India were saying this before, but their report was, was kind of suppressed a little bit. Now, I did hear this on InfoWars about a month ago, and I thought, mm, it sounds maybe a little bit like they're jumping the shark. 
but now it's coming out in the mainstream media. I think InfoWars described it as it's got the HIV delivery system, which is what it makes it spread more, become more potent, more infectious. So in this article from South China Morning Post, they say that the discovery could help explain not only why it spread, but also where it came from and how to fight it. But as you know, a lot of people are saying this is a chimera, this is manufactured, this isn't something that just came naturally out of a combination of rare species of pangolins and bats and whatnot. So um, scientists are saying that SARS entered the body by binding with a receptor protein called ACE2 on a cell membrane, and early studies suggested that the coronavirus, which shares 80% of the genome structure of SARS, might follow a similar path, but the ACE protein does not exist in large quantities in healthy people. And this is what they say limited the outbreak of SARS. But the other thing that I have heard is that the amount of ACE2 receptor are sometimes a, a genetically linked to race. And therefore, of course, some people are saying, has this got a racist-specific element to it? Which, I mean, who knows? It's just one of those uh, big variables in the whole thing. So what I'd just like to go on to say is this was a really interesting um, tweet that came out of uh, China. Uh, Hold on, oh damn it, I'm going to, show, <laughs> I'm going to show it to you, no, it's going to disappear, I should have kept the page. Okay, before I go to that tweet while I get it up again, I wanted to talk about the mystery surrounding the ouster of Chinese researchers from a Canadian laboratory. Now this was reported last month, I didn't pay much attention to it, but it might be time to mention it. So this was from July the 19th, 2019, reported by Brian Owens of uh, sciencemag.org. He said, Canadian researchers are reacting with puzzlement to news that a policy breach, in inverted commas, has caused the nation's only high containment disease laboratory to bar a prominent Chinese-Canadian virologist, her biologist husband, and a number of students from the faculty. On the 5th of July, officials at the National Micro Microbiology Laboratory in Winnipeg, Canada, escorted Zhang Guo Qi, a biologist, Kidding Cheng, and an unknown number of her students from the lab, and revoked their access rights, according to Canadian media reports. So, later Public Health Agency of Canada said it referred an administrative matter to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, but it didn't provide uh, additional details. So a lot of observers were speculating, and they said the case could involve concerns about the improper transfer of intellectual property to China, and all of the researchers involved are believed to be Asian. So um, Frank Plummer, who is a former scientific director who left in 2015, said the lab isn't an obvious target for academic or industrial espionage, and there's nothing particular, particularly secret there. Well, you know, who knows? Maybe it's a case that we would say that, wouldn't he? So uh, the other tweet that I wanted to read you, that came from a Beijing correspondent for C CNCBC. And she said, holy moly, this is inverted commas, I had to do a double take. China's factory activity plunges worse than in the global financial crisis in 2008 and 9. Manufacturing PMI is the lowest on record of 35.7, non-manufacturing PMI at 29.6, and composite PMI at 28.9. Uh, so that was Eunice Yoon of CNBC. So obviously she's talking about the output and manufacturing for China having really dropped because of this crisis. So the other thing that I was, remember the other day I was saying about the link to uh, religious activity. So for example, the huge outbreak in South Korea is very much linked to a church in Daegu province. Uh, it's a kind of Christian cultish church. Then again, there was an outbreak in Hong Kong linked to a temple. That was just the other day. The original outbreak in Singapore was linked to a church. Then we had uh, the outbreak in a city in Iran known for pilgrimages. That's in Kong. And uh, I just kind of think this was really odd. So it's almost like, and I heard someone else say this, and it was exactly what I was thinking. It's almost like it's been seed in places where people are going to spread out afterwards. So for example, in Italy it happened, uh, in Italy, in the skiing region, when loads of school kids are on holiday all across Europe, loads of people taking skiing holidays, and therefore they're in the, uh, predominantly in Italy, 
in that particular region and they go home after the holiday spread it throughout Europe because that's basically what's happened from Italy it's spread out to virtually every European country from Cone in Iran it's spread out all over the Middle East and Singapore I, I'm not Singapore sorry um, South Korea just announced in their morning update on January 29th uh, their eight o'clock morning update that they had an nearly 600 new cases 597 new cases so it's absolutely going crazy in south korea and i was just yeah i, I don't know i just kind of got to thinking it was kind of odd that it was planted in all these places from which it would obviously proliferate in in multitude of different directions so as i promised i was going to do um just a little update there's been a new presumptive case in oregon also a case of community spread they're not quite sure where it came from I believe it's a primary school teacher. As I said, 594 cases in South Korea. Uh, in the whole of China, only four new cases and two deaths across the mainland, excluding Hubei. 45 new deaths in Hubei and 423 new cases in Wuhan. Across the world, let's see. So I did Diamond Princess. South Korea is now 2,931. Italy, 889. Japan, 234. Iran 388, uh, Singapore 96, Hong Kong 93, the States 64, Thailand 41, Taiwan 34, Malaysia 25, Australia 25, Germany 48, Vietnam still on 16, uh, could be a bit low there, the UAE 19, United Kingdom 20, France 57, Canada 15, Macau 10, Bahrain 38, Kuwait 45, Iraq 8, Philippines 3, India 3, Russia 2, Spain 32, Oman 6, Nepal, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, Belgium and Egypt all on 1, Finland 3, Sweden has gone to 11, Israel 7, Lebanon 4, Afghanistan 1, Austria uh, 6, Croatia 5, Switzerland 8, Algeria and Brazil 1, Greece 4, Pakistan 2, North Macedonia 1, Georgia 1, Norway 6, Romania 3, Denmark 2, Estonia 1, Netherlands 2, San Marino, Nigeria, Lithuania and New Zealand and Belarus 1, Mexico now 2, Azerbaijan, Iceland and Narco 1. Sounds like I'm giving you football scores there, but uh, just to keep everyone updated, as I say, I'm not coming down on either side, I'll leave it to you all to make up your mind, but so those are basically some of the most important features and stories of today that I just thought were worth chatting about.